Hey, welcome everybody. Good evening, good night, good morning, good afternoon, depending on where you are tuned in from. Today I am back with another episode of What Now? The series on Instagram Live. And um, today I have a really great guest who I didn't know about until I got onto him through a talk with a great singer-songwriter, Charlie Vox, who just joined as well. Hi, Charlie. Hope all is well. Have you missed our talk? Please um, make sure you can uh, watch it on IGTV. So it's all on there. All of the talks that I've been doing are saved on my IGTV. So um, no, I will not be talking in Dutch today because I have an international audience. Sorry, yep. <laughs> uh, thank you for joining though. Um, I see Shamari Reed, my guest today, is already in here. So let me get him live with me right now. So he can introduce himself. Um, great guy. I <laughs> I actually enjoyed getting to know him through Charlie. So Charlie, thank you for that. Um, and I'm definitely still looking for the movie to come out. Hey, Shamari, how are you? Okay. How you doing? Uh, I'm good. I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Working, you know, same Working. old. <laughs> yeah, well, we that's actually awesome. I'm sorry, you're okay. breaking up. What did you say? Oh, I said we're actually in the studio right now, just finishing up some edits. Oh, cool. That's for the movie? Yes. And when is the movie supposed to come out? So we're hoping to come out uh, end of July. We just okay, waiting for cool. the confirmation from the platforms that we're going to be on. So once okay, we get the confirmation cool. from them, uh, I'll put an official date out. Hopefully I get a confirmation within the next week or so. Okay, cool. Well, before we get all into that, um, everybody who's joining us, uh, welcome. I hope everyone is safe and healthy, especially in the United States, because everything is flaring up again and states are locking down again. Um, uh, you know, this is all for uh, motivational relief for creatives. This is how the talk started. But um, over here, we're actually pretty much going back to normal with social distancing in place. But um, I, I was thinking the What Now series is now evolving into a more inspirational show, if I can call it that. Right. But for you guys in the United States, it's still what now because you still can't do everything. But I do see that ent entertainment industry out there is also opening up again. How how is your experience with that? Yeah, so um, it's it's really good. It's, it's, it's really um, hopeful um, because we got word, especially for our industry, that the uh, movie theaters is going to be opening back up soon. So now, like our premiere can go back on the schedule. Of course, being taking all safety precautions. Right. Um, and uh, I think that is, uh, I think it's made people get a little bit more creative, if you ask me, because I think everybody was in this like robotic kind of format where everybody was kind of doing the same thing. And I think now it made you go back to your old roots and have to use your own personal experiences and be creative and, and really go outside and really touch people and really do these things. So I, I kind of, you know, I'm kind of happy where we are right now as far as being creative. Um, right. And I'm looking forward to everything opening up and everybody getting back and healing and, you know, the world moving on and uh, we learning from this experience and, you know, able to move on and, and move and, and be better, be better right. people. Well, that is the hope that we all come out of this better, that we had the time to sit and reflect and think and, and how to become better and how to contribute better to this world. That's the hope. So, <laughs> you right. know, not everyone will probably fall into that category, but let's, let's, let's assume we all are. Um, going back to your background. So I already just told people that I'm, I kind of got, got to know you through uh, my talk with Charlie. Right. And um, you and I kind of connected and I love all the stuff that you're doing. We have a lot of things in common. And we connected instantly as far as being creative and, you know, right. knowing how to find solutions instead of looking at the problems. So right. that was that was one of the things why I felt like, OK, this guy has something to say. He's very inspirational, motivational, not a quitter, just following his dreams, which is something that we all need in these times. So 
having read your bio and having talked to you, you actually started in a rap group. Right. Yes. I, uh, I started uh, rapping myself when I was like really young and I was just like, you know, the, the typical have my own little notebook and I write my little raps and I would, you know, take a radio and play an instrumental and record myself on another one. And um, I actually was inspired by my cousin, who is a member of the group Blackstreet. And right. um, I used to love the way the family kind of was like, oh, my God, we're so proud. And so I was like, yeah, I, I want to be like that. Like, I want to be like Big Cousin. So um, throughout life, I, you know, I was playing around with the music. I really probably didn't get serious until I was about maybe 18, 19. And um, I ended up linking with a bunch of guys in my twenties and we uh we formed this rap group and um it was cool. We we did our little thing. It was called the Teeter Bro Boys and it was a cool little thing. And um one of the one of the members uh he kinda started getting a little bit more popular than the rest of us. Um to make the story the long story short. Right. At that point I was already kind of taking the leadership role as far as like handling our business, our travel arrangements, different things like that. I didn't know I was being the manager at that time. I was just trying to be you responsible. You were taking that role on, yeah. Uh, and, and I just made a decision, like, you know what? I think that it's time for me to step back and really focus on somebody who's really catching people here. Is as humbling as I can be because, you know, as a rapper, you don't want to say, hey, this person is better than me. And I just, right. But uh, I think that I, I matured in that moment, and I, I did that. And um, we started we started moving forward. Um, it just so happened that... Um, he was good friends with uh, Fetty Wap, and they happened to make a record together, and the record took off. Right. And he ended up getting a deal with um, the same label as Fetty Wap, and we I, I learned a lot from that experience because from that experience, you know, I was now part of a label <clears throat> where we're going on national tours, we're traveling all over the country, um, different things I just, I just didn't have access to before. I'm meeting you know, people like Kevin Lowes and Leo right. Cohen, important people. Um, and, and not saying that I, I, I was one-on-one, -on -one, you know, doing so much business with them, but just being able to be in a room and have right. some time with them. And, Breathing the atmosphere. Right. And, uh, you know, just meeting the, the radio people, the press, the people I did build relationship with, Live Nation people, all of these different people. I learned a lot in those couple of years. Uh, because of that opportunity uh, through uh, my guy, Nick the Grit, who runs the label, him and Danny Sue, you know, shout out to all of them and RGS staff, um, right. that us the opportunity to learn and grow with them. Um, and then- So you were, you, were tour you were touring with him when they went, you know, through the country? Yes. Okay. And yes. that's how you built your network, really. That's is that when you felt like, okay, this is more my thing, I feel, good at this i can do this i love this i want to help artists become great yes uh it was something that was natural to me and i started noticing the other artists that was on the label asking for my guidance and my help so right. I'm like, i think this is like my thing like helping other people bring out their talent because i have the business skill set i think this is my thing and i happen to be creative so i could help them on the album, I can help them with music, I can help them with video concepts, and it just worked. It was it was really, 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 really good thing, a really lovely opportunity. That's awesome. And so how long ago was this when you started feeling like that you follow you you're now following your passion? Probably about two thousand fifteen. Okay, that's not too long ago. Okay, yeah. cool. Two thousand right. I started with the music grind with the group two thousand ten. But 2015 is when it was like, oh, this is not a hobby anymore. Right. Like, you can make your money. Like, <laughs> yeah, I'm actually in another city right now because of music. Like, right. this is, you know, so it, it was, it, it, still to this day, sometimes I'm like, wow, I can't believe we did that. You know, well, that's, you know what, honestly, there are people that were born with that dream that grew up trying to chase something. And there are people that, kind of like roll into it by experience and by situations. I mean, I'm the same way. Um, music journalism is something that I was always good at, and I, but I still rolled into it. And then also artist management and consultancy is something that I rolled into. I would have never thought I would do this, but I love it. And I 
I found my calling, so to speak, in those two things. Um, right. Just, just a little side note, uh, talking about Black Street, you were giving me this whole Teddy Riley vibe now with the people in the back in the studio <laughs> and stuff. <laughs> You know, but uh, please, please don't, please don't have any bad technicians out there, and and keep this this uh, connection going. <laughs> I'm really, I would keep it really simple. I wanted to get in my ambiance, so I, I put the lights on. But uh, we, I, we was really just looking at something, so the lights happened to be off, and I was like, oh, the lights should be cool. If if, that, if, it, if it looks crazy, then I'll turn. Well, back. can can your boy start breaking dancing and stuff, breaking out to dancing like uh, what's his name? <laughs> No, I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, I'm here with the director. I don't think he uh, break this. I don't think okay, he wants well, you know, I don't think um, I forgot the dude's name. He could, he wasn't a dancer either. I think he was an A and R. But um, anyway. oh yeah, I, that was breaking into behind Teddy Riley. Yeah, he was an A and R. Yeah, he's an A yeah, and R. So he was just grooving, like you know, he didn't have to dance, but. Um, anyway, that was a side note, um, and I would still love to talk to your cousin as well to see, you know, what he's up to. Okay, going into your career, so you're now doing this this music thing. Um, how did you end up um, uh, working with Charlie? Oh, so um, I was doing my thing, and I had a mutual friend um, that was uh, at the time dating her, and um, he was like, "Oh man, you know, you need to meet." of my, my girlfriend and she's so great and she's da, 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 da. and I'm trying to tell him like you know I'll dude I'm, I'm like I'm not puff daddy like I can't <laughs> I can't her. do nothing for her <laughs> right like I could be creative I could work with her I could do these things I could give advice I could try to plug her to my resources but my resource is more like hip hop right now and right you know I, I could try but I don't want you to be so hopeful thinking I'm going to come be the savior and I don't know. And he's like, yo, please let me just have, take you to dinner. I'm like, all right, fine. So in my mind, I'm like, I'm just going to go to dinner and I'm just going to tell them no for like, right. but I heard her music. I was about to say, and then you heard her. I heard her say no to that. <laughs> I heard her music and I was like, wait, what? Like, wait, like if, if I don't know, we're going to figure this out. Like right. music is incredible. And then her personality, she was, she's actually not was because we're currently working <laughs> together still. She is really the best artist I ever worked with. And I don't know if it's because she got so much experience. So she might have got the. Probably, yeah. And fourth stuff out with previous managers and stuff. Yeah. But we just so like on the same page, even when we're not on the same page, on the same page. Right. So That's hard. important. Yeah. She, she don't give me a tough time. I respect her uh, creative thought, and in the, I'm not like, oh, you know, right. we just got a great vibe, um, and, and and it just worked, man. We're doing some amazing stuff, and we got some good things coming out, and um, yeah, so that's that's how it originally started. I heard that music. So, I, let me tell you this. If it wasn't for you, I would have probably tried to talk to her, <laughs> <laughs> but that's okay. Yeah, she's... She, Amazing. Yeah, she. When I first heard her, I was like, "Okay, great," but it it makes sense for her to have all her business in order already because you know she is kind of like a vet. Um, right. People, if you log in, if you don't know, if you tune in, if you don't know who Charlie Box is, check her out. I did a talk with her as well. It's on my IGTV. Um, fast forward, going into your uh, film producing um, role, right. how how did you slide into that? All right, so uh, I was doing uh, treatments for music videos. So I started doing the treatment for music videos, um, and then the the, the, the guy in the grit from RGF, he had an opportunity where he was going to try to do like this streets is watching kind of thing, where he's going to promote the uh, of the artist through a short story, and he gave me an opportunity to produce it, like just because I was doing so good with the videos, right. And, and not that I knew what I was getting myself into, but he was just like, hey, it's a longer version of the videos. You made a whole right. video storyline, just try to make it longer. Uh, and then um, the director, uh, Jamal Hall, who was a good friend of mine, and we did a lot of business with the music videos as well. He already was doing so many movies, and he would allow me to come and shadow him on set. So I would learn a lot from just really him just opening up his resources to me. Uh, so 
after us doing so much business and us having such a great rapport, uh, Halls Mill Network, they gave me an opportunity and said, hey, I think you did an amazing job over there and we got something else for you to try. And that's wow. pretty much how it happened. Just really trying and working hard, like really not knowing anything, but just willing to work hard and outwork everybody. Right. So one of the things that I like about your story and your, your work ethic is that you don't necessarily feel like I have to stay in one role. Because um, people ask me often, so what do you exactly do? Like, what are you? Are you an artist manager? Are you a music journalist? I am more than that. You know, I am right. a woman. I am a sister. I am a daughter. We are not just one person. Um, and so in order to explore which talents you have and where your passion may, may lie, you have to venture out and do multiple things or try different things. So that is something that I always encourage people to do because you may end up doing something that you like a lot better than what you're actually doing. Uh, I, especially if you don't do something that you love. If you're doing something just to pay bills, go do something, invest right. in it, nurture your talent. Right. And it doesn't mean that you can only be good at one thing because I'm sure you feel like you can do it all. Yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm sure people that work with you feel like that. And I, I just, I admire that because, well, I admire it because I'm the same way. So it, technically I'm saying I admire myself, but it has everything to do with not listening to what society tells you you can and you can't do. Um, because we're so conditioned to be put in a box like, but you're this, so you can't be that. And I'm a person that always thinks outside the box. I'm not going by society's rules. And people always give me the weird look. And I'm like, well, you're not paying my bills. So don't worry about it. Right. Right. And that's, and that's the same way I feel. I just feel like that. Like, um, um, I don't know. I, I, I won't even label myself yet. Because I don't know wh where I'm going to drive it. And I have right. to, I think entertainment, I think music, movies, it kind of correlates anyway. Um. But I, I'm not going to uh, lie. I love uh, film producing. Uh, I think, like, this is my new biggest passion. I love it. And it's it, it, new. So you, yeah. can, you can live it up. <laughs> and I, I, get, I feel like I got more control over it as opposed to me depending on uh, so much from a, another person with music because I'm not doing the music myself. But right. for, I'm doing my portion myself that can, you know, helps me with my success of it and, and my results and what my desires is of that situation where music is kind of like, you know, artists can be like, oh, I don't feel good this month. So it's like, okay, I guess I'm just sitting here for the month. Right. Um, so I, that's why I like film producing so much um, more. I do love music and I don't think I ever stop being around music because um, the one thing I'm going to say about music is there's no other film get from anything in this world but music right being on tour live stage you know all these that that i feel you can't get it from nothing else i feel yeah. you um i see people asking questions please uh if you want to have uh, ask a question put it in the question box below and we'll get to it um when we can because i don't want to interrupt the flow of the conversation uh but we will answer all the questions so feel free to put them in the question box um yeah, so talking about film producing or music, if you had to choose between one of them and you couldn't do the other, what would you choose? Would it be film producing at this point? It would be definitely film producing. I'll bring Charlie with me, though. Yeah, I was but, about to say, like, don't make Charlie mad. She in here. Nah, so, it would but be, it's okay, Charlie. You can come to me if he leaves. <laughs> it, it would be film producing, uh, but I would, I'm the type of person where I, I, if, if the person wants to, I try to make everybody a part of my world anyway you know my my partner that you I put her in the movie yeah she's a, oh she's definitely anything i do she, i'm like you want to do it yes no cool <laughs> like you know cause that's 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 my team you know right that's what we got going yeah. on so anything she do same way i'm on it yeah um and you know i just i try to do that with, with most of my things like my partner for music i i tie him into this you know right um, so uh shout out to hush Ra. i'm not sure if he's on but you know that's my my partner for, for a lot of my stuff that I do, he does a lot of the writing for the, the screenplay stuff for for the movies as well. So, Well, that's, that's how it works. When you build a team around you, you're going to roll with the team no matter what 
any team member does. Right. That's how, I mean, that's how I would like it to be. That's the ideal world, especially in the entertainment and creative industry. We have to support each other and, and rock with each other. So it doesn't really matter because all fields are kind of overlapping nowadays. Um, you know, actors want to be singers, singers want to be actors and, and want to be clothing designers and whatnot. So, you know, you have to support whatever they want to do. Right. Um, okay, going into the family life, because we've we've spoken on your career now for a little bit. Uh, right. I know you have a family. Your kids yeah. are super cute. Thank um, you. How do you balance your your work life with your family? Life? Because I've seen people in here that know you like he's been on the same grind since I've known him. And so yeah. how do you balance that out? Um, I try to I don't I don't know. Uh, really answer what I try to do is I just try to make them as a part of what I'm doing is possible um so like my daughter she's nine and she's into makeup and I'm not too thrilled about her being nine into makeup <laughs> what I try to do to spin it is say hey won't you come with me to the movie thing and see the people that do special effects makeup so now oh, she's playing oh, yeah. effects and she's only nine so now as I grow I want her to grow so now as I'm right makeup artist, I'm going to bring her along to try to see if she can shadow. This is something that you can't get from a college education. That's it's very true. Yeah. Valuable, priceless. Um, so um, my son, he's, he's, he's really young. He's five. Uh, I just really, like, I eliminate a lot of the, the nonsense, you know. So right. like, um, I have my days where I like to party a lot and when I was like to hang out a lot. And that's kind of what, what I kind of cut. Like, I kind of like go to work. I get my, uh, you know, whatever I got to do, do my movie stuff, and then I'm kind of back in the house and I'm chilling with them. Um, right. I balance it as, as, as well with my lady as well. Like, you know, I try to, I don't hide her in the cut, hide her in the cut. Right. Court. You know, I bring her along. I let her see. I let her grow with me so she could be as excited as I am and, and, and be supportive. Uh, yeah, to, that's, again, it's a team effort. It's Your team. family is part of your team. You're a part of right. her team and she's part of your team. So... You have to have that support. That's something that people just don't often enough realize. Right. That, you know, even if your partner's not in the creative industry or whatever, or in your same industry, you have to be supportive of what they love, what their passion is. It's not going to work. You're not going to be successful either in, in your personal life or your work life if your partner does not support you and if you don't support your partner with what they want to do. Right, and that's and that's our our thing. We, we we were really good friends, so we got that we got that special bond where you know I support what she does. Um, she support what I do one hundred ten percent. I mean, when I was going back and forth on tour, you know, she was doing everything. You know, adjusting her work schedule to make sure she could get the kids, and you know, she was very very supportive. So that's really how I'm able to do it. I got a I got a great supportive staff, not just my lady, not just my kids. You know, my friends. I got I have I'm lucky and blessed to have some really, really good, solid friends. In, I in see them. I see them in here. Everybody's talking you up. Like, I glance, I see what's happening in the, in the comments. And I love that everyone is so supportive of you. It speaks volumes to your character and who you are. Um, and again, we recently met. So right. my first impression was exactly what they're now, you know, confirming about you. So that's that's great to know. Um, and I'm happy that you are able to balance it and that your kids also grow up to see how that works in this industry between their parents and how the, the, the perfect uh, marriage should be when you have jobs like this, right. and not just regular nine to fives and, and regular careers, so to speak. Right. Um, going more into um, the, 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 the COVID-19 situation. So I know New Jersey is not necessarily going back into another lockdown, but how has that affected your uh, personal life and your work life having to stay home the first two months? I need a vacation. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it made me reevaluate some things. Um, what's important? Um, it made me uh, it made me better in a lot of ways, but it, it's been tough. I'm not gonna sit here and be like, yeah, I did it. It's so it it's been really tough because you know I had to juggle, you know, doing stuff for the movie, doing my other businesses, and being a dad. You know, right? My my wifey works in the hospital, 
So oh, wow. She on the front lines. Front line. So she has to go, you know. So now I'm I have the more flexible schedule, of course. So now I'm home and I'm juggling between uh Hall sending me clips about the movie and different things. Homeschooling. Homeschooling and <laughs> You know, I'm getting frustrated there. I'm like, I told you two plus two equals four. Like, so, you know. Right. And, and, and so it, it, it's been tough. Because really what's been more tough for me is, is trying to keep them active. Because I, I don't want them to lose that activity. So right. we creative and, you know, taking them outside and riding their bikes and, you know, doing hiking stuff and stuff I wasn't probably doing as much before has been a big bonus that I added to my regiment with with the with with the kids at home because it's, right. it's been tough. It's it's been real tough. Yeah, because we were we were on the phone. You were writing. Uh, the yeah, right. for the kids. Yeah. Right. And yeah. so when you say that that's actually been good, like staying active with the kids, do you feel like you've changed your your health routine as well because of that? I am C Mawson, Black C Mawson, <laughs> all the <laughs> that C Mawson. <laughs> I am, it definitely, that it did that, that did wonders for me because uh, I wasn't like uh, so unhealthy or something like that. But when I say like taking my health to another level. Right. Fruit every day, the importance of like getting that fruit nutrition, uh, drinking so much more water and the exercise because I was playing with the gym, but more weights, not like running, biking, walking. Right. Um, so it's it, no cardio, just muscle. Yeah, I was I was playing with the treadmill, but not as much cardio as I'm getting now. So um, for health, for me, it changed my life, and I'm gonna keep it going when things turn back and get back regular. Because um, yeah, I wasn't doing none of this stuff before. So that so that is one of the things that a lot of people in my talks have been been thinking about and really um, implementing in their lives a new health routine because they have the time now and right. a lot of artists that i've talked to who were always on tour always traveling they're the ones that were like i have to make a change once everything opens up because i was so unhealthy doing back-to-back -back shows in different countries traveling all the time not eating proper and you know they're actually trying to implement that differently when things open up and they tour again right and so have you been cooking since you were the the stay-at-home dad during COVID-19? That's not my strong point. So <laughs> uh, I'm I'm not allowed too much in the kitchen. Um, so I've your been, wife had to cook after she came back from the hospital? She been, she been, old, I'm telling you, she sons, she respect. sons. Respect, I respect her. <laughs> um, So she's been cooking. Um, I've been doing a lot, like uh, just trying to help her out with like taking out certain things. I might do breakfast stuff, cause that's my-, my Oh yeah. Uh, I do breakfast, uh, sometimes some lunch things, but dinner, nah. You I'm just not. throw some sea moss in there, and you're like, that's my contribution. <laughs> that's, it. that's it. Okay, so what are some of the things, or who are some of the people that inspire you? So what are, you know, what do, what do, where do you get your inspiration from? Um, My dad, my mom, um... My cousin still to this day from from Black Street. Um, can you can you tell me why your mom and dad are specifically inspiring you? How are they doing that? <clears throat> uh, my mom inspires me through um, really just her knowledge, um, her her temperament with different things. Um, my dad is like this wizard to me in my eyes, where he just like. No matter what's going on, he got something you should try to 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 conquer it. You know, I'm kind of like that. You know, where we're like, uh, yeah, this is the problem, but let me focus on trying to get a solution. Then, like, focusing on we got to stay home. Okay, we got to stay home. What could we do while we home? You know, I rather focus on that than stay home. So my dad just him being a wizard, being so, and en en you know, enlightening and uh. I just look at him and I be like, wow, you know, look how he's dealing with this issue. It's not really bothering him, even if it's bothering him. Like, right. I that to my kids. You know, I have to be that. They have to look at me and feel as safe and comfortable. They have to feel the same way about you as you feel about your, your dad. Right. That's right. awesome. Yeah. So that's 
so my motivation is like a, a, a triform thing where it's kind of like I get motivation for him and then motivation for them to be better for them. Right. And that's, you know, that's kind of where most of my motivation come. And then I look at other people that's out here doing the same things that I'm doing. Like, you know, my, my cousin, he's a, he's a tour. He's a, he, he does a lot of touring, you know, um, I didn't know he still tours that much. So for yeah. the people that are just joining us who are, who are not knowing um, Shamari, his cousin is part of the famous uh, group Black Street. Right. So and he's, yeah, I didn't know there was still tour or that he specifically is touring still. Yes, he, he tours, <clears throat> they, they're touring out of a month, you know, three, four times a month. And, you know, they're, they're going far. So they're going to Amsterdam, Africa. I haven't seen them lately, but they've been here, yeah. Yeah, so you know, they're going they're going they're going all, all over these these different places and you know, when that slowed down, you have to be creative and say, "Okay, you know, I can't put on my thumbs, what am I going to do?" So seeing him, you know, balance it and get his other businesses going and you know, try to stay creative and stay positive and not let it get him down and you know, practice on his craft still at this time with him being a professional and all these accolades still practicing on his craft. That to me was like, okay, it's game time. Like, yeah, I'm not going to be down. I'm going to be a better producer. The things that I don't know, the technical things that I don't know, I'm going to sit here and learn. learn. Yeah. Do that. Um, so that's really where I, where my motivation comes from. Just seeing other people still in the game and me saying, right. like, I got to still be in the game. Yeah, you got to make sure you're still in the game 20, 30, 40 years from now, basically. Right. Unless right. you want to retire, um, no. but you still want to be relevant. <laughs> um, I saw a question come in earlier. Uh, if an artist uh, is looking for a manager, how do they go about getting one? Which is a funny question because tomorrow I actually have a master class on um, – uh, what managers do and how to get one but i'll i'll do this question i'll give you this question uh so uh if you're looking for a manager um i think the first thing to do that a lot of new artists do wrong is you don't just be like oh i need a manager you right do? the first thing you should do is try to build a relationship and a rapport to see if you guys can work together that's rule number one two Understand what a manager does. Your manager is not your daddy. Your, your not manager, your mama either. Your mama, not your bank account. Like, this is not what your manager Not do. your bank. Yes, thank you. A lot of the new artists think, all right, I'm going to get a manager. And they start saying, all right, well, he got money. So that means I can. No, 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 no. <laughs> this is how this works. Thank you. Know? you. I really, most managers really don't even you know, put money to things. They kind of... Right. You should be lucky if a manager does that. <laughs> right. But a lot of people that's new artists, they don't know that because a lot of managers like myself, they do try to help contribute financially to, to the goal faster. Um, oh, I've but, lost more money than I've made with artists uh, so far. Oh, me too. Same same here. <laughs> and But the thing I like about Charlie, to pick her up once again, yeah. she's so self-sufficient and she understands that. So yeah. like... When I give money towards her movement, she like, oh, all right, cool. Because she's already prepared to take care of her own. That's why it right. works. I don't have to explain that to her. But I kind of shy away from a lot of the new guys because they don't they don't really have a budget. So, like, all the weight fall on me. So I got to be the budget. I got to be the resource. I got to work harder than you. And right. And just go to the studio and just make the good music. But we, we just don't live in a society like that anymore where – you could just send it to the record label, and they just like, oh yeah, great, bring them in. Now you gotta have right. the buzz. You gotta have, they got they want to know everything about you. They want to see you already got some steam rolling before they deal with you. So right for an artist that doesn't, my advice is first establish some kind of movement and and, and have a budget, a realistic budget, so that when you do find the perfect manager for you, you can let them know like this is my budget. Right, this is what I'm trying to do these are some of my goals. These are right. what I, my pros, my cons, and you guys can get together and see if you'll be a good fit because everybody, I might be a great manager for Charlie, but a bad manager for Right. Thank you. And it's a, it's a person, if I can add to that, first of all, it's a personal relationship. Like I'm probably more 
uh, tight with my artists than my partner, so to speak. Because right. um, you talk every day if, if necessary. Right. Um, but you also have to know everything about each other in order to be full transparent and um, understand that that's how your business and your teamwork is going to flourish. Um, I also want to add, before you even think about I need a manager, realize that you actually have business to manage. Because what I've noticed is that new artists nowadays say, oh, I need a manager when they really want an assistant or a secretary or some little help that can do all the things that you don't want to do. Yep. As an artist, you're a business. So you have to make sure that you know how to run your own business before bringing in somebody else that can, you know, run things the way you want them to run it with their, you know, insight and knowledge. Yep. Um, because too many artists aren't talking about management <laughs> and they don't even have anything to manage. Like, I, no. <laughs> oh, asked me the other day, he got three songs on SoundCloud. He don't got no, nothing else. Never did a show <laughs> like, and I'm like, I would rather, I would rather give you some advice. I would rather right. us build a rapport and yeah. we take steps before I try to tie you down to something or you tie me down to something. Right. Let's just build a rapport. Let's get to know each other. Let me give you some beginning steps. Because I have right. free game all the time because I, that's one thing I promised myself. I said, you know, for me being blessed with so many opportunities, I'm never going to be that guy that's just like, oh, too Hollywood to talk to you. Or I ain't got time to talk to you. If I can make the time, I mean, from people that hit me up on right. Instagram, I see in the street, I always give free game as much free game as I got to give. Hey, honestly, you're better than me because this is my this is my livelihood. So I can't be doing the free game anymore. I mean, I can give you the regular tips and advice, but somebody come asking me for a whole bunch of things and listening to that music, that's consult. That's one on one consult. You can book my services. You're better than me, and I had to learn to talk about money. Right. Jump because I always gave everything for free. Where right. does that leave me? Nowhere. I've built 20 years of blood, sweat, and tears on this network I got. I can't be giving out that shit for free. That's money. Now, and... now I do consult as well. So I don't <laughs> I don't give out too much free game, but like a lot of the stuff is beginning stuff. Like Right. The regular like, the basics. Yeah. Right. Listen, before you get a manager, that, that kind of free game. Right. Now, okay. Because right. I was gonna say you better than me. <laughs> Now, the, the stuff, that, that's my job, too. So at the end of the day, anything that requires me giving up my resources and putting some legwork into it, nah, that's a, that's a different situation, you know? Yeah, okay. I'll be on the same page. Yeah. Um, are you actually taking on new artists at the moment? No. Especially not during Corona times. I I mean... I, I, would, I would take on... I would, I would take on new consultant project right i'm not yeah. taking on any new artists to be no it, it would have to be a special situation right yeah. no i feel that I'm, the, I'm i'm in the same position also um and i'm saying this because there were questions about how to go about getting a manager and just wanted to get it out the way before people start spamming you on some hey i want you to manage me <laughs> but yeah. hey he's he's up for consult so uh, i am yeah. up for my I can, i'm available for a fee <laughs> exactly that's how how we should talk um what are some of the 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 things that you have to learn the hard way in this industry not being too nice i had to learn the nice guy stuff like you know how they say nice guys finish last i really yeah. know now i always felt like man you treat people with respect you're gonna get respect but in the hip-hop industry <laughs> Not that I gotta be an asshole, but you have to be a little bit like not too nice. It's, it's a weird. I can't, I can't explain it, but oh, know. I know because yeah. I'm too nice. We're really the same. I mean, yeah. we just met, but also off of that one time that we spoke on the phone. We I mean we spoke for like an hour. We hour. have so much in common, right? And so when you say not being too nice, I'm instantly like, oh, that should have been my answer too if I had that question. Yeah, not being that's 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 the one thing I had to learn the hard way. I seen people straight up like look at me a certain way because I was being too nice, and I had to learn. And, 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 and even with artists that I had in the past, I think that I got looked at as being I don't know doing them wrong or something. 
because I was being too nice and when like I had to dial some of that down, it got now it get looked at like I'm not doing enough. Right. So I, Man. Learn, I had to yeah. learn I, like, you know, oh, okay, I, I get it. Like You I, gotta walk that fine line. Yeah. And you gotta but you also gotta read situations. Like in some situations you can be nice. And in right. other situations you just have to read the other person or the situation of the business or the deal, whatever it may be right. in order to put on a different hat. Because I still believe that being nice lasts longer because, you know, me, I've been in this industry for 20 years now. Yes. People I'm old um, you know. as a journalist, but I don't think anybody has anything bad to say. Like it's also building, like you said, building rapport, building, you know, credibility, but also good credit. And right. something that's priceless in this industry is your connections, your network. Right. That you can be the asshole all you want to for your dollars or your euros, but if people just want to don't want to deal with you anymore, you're going to have that dollar one time. Yeah. And not for a long time. So. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, Network I is is everything. So being nice. You just have to understand when to be nice and, and, and when to be business, you know, put your business hat on and just be strictly professional. Right. And that and that's why I say, I think that's why I got to say, like, not being, because I'm still nice, but not being too nice. I was being too nice. And that's what was getting me into trouble. But I, I, my per, my natural personality is, is, is what it is, you know, but now I just understand, like, when I see... I'm not going to overextend. Like, right. Earn. Right. Oh, that's, that's, that comes after, after a while. Like right. when you've proven yourself and I'm, I'm sorry, I'm laughing in, in, in the meantime, because I see people in the comments fighting for, for your, your services, um, <laughs> which is hilarious to me, or either they're joking or it's funny to me. Um, <laughs> again, it shows, it shows how, how wanted you are. And uh, it makes me want to be also an artist fr from you. <laughs> I'm not even an artist. But um, yeah, so being being nice is, or being too nice is not necessarily working in this industry. But I do believe that, um, you know, just being being respectful as well. Because people always talk about, you know, you got to you gotta, uh, give respect to get respect or get respect to give respect. That's, you know, just be respectful. Everybody's a person. You're Everybody's right. trying to live their dream one way or another in this industry and just be mindful of that. Right. Absolutely. So what are some of the things that you're now looking forward to, to doing once, let's say Corona is completely wiped out? Uh, well, this is why I kind of want to bring my, 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 uh, my, uh, my, my, my director friend in on the talk, because I, I really look forward to doing a lot of different projects. Wait, 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 wait. I was just going to talk to you, not to other people. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's it's so many different projects that that we got on the line, man. I'm just so excited to kind of get back to in filming mode. We got like four on the line right now. And then one is, is a traveling opportunity to go film. And I'm just so excited, man. I couldn't be more blessed right now. I, I really I really couldn't be. But uh, I wanted him to kind of tune chime in with some of the things we got going on and bring him on what's his name the name is director hall jamal director hall. hall let's go mr hall director hall come in here and, and tell us about yourself what's up mr hall what's going on how's everybody doing we're all good we're, we're excited to hear about everything you guys got cooking yes yes oh no we're we running out here we're doing good we're grinding. so but i'm glad to give us the opportunity to speak and i know you spoke to charlie already very early in a course our Shamari. So it's all good. Yeah, well I'm I'm excited to hear about, about you. He's putting you in the chair. So um no. <laughs> you're the director. I'm I'm assuming you're also the the director for Lit. And so what are you guys besides Lit working on um right now? Um right now we um besides Lit, we got um only at Jay's uh, it's, a, it's like a you know uh, exclusive car wash in Patterson. Where not only is this a car wash, they do um, car detailing where you want to wrap in your car. Cool. It, um, they got a fish truck across the street. They own a laundromat across the street. So a lot going on. 
And so we're just showing the, um, the generational family and how they are running it. You know, wow. from grandfather to uh, the all called Jay, from Big Jay, Little Jay, and Jay. So it's, it's all good. And um, we got that going. We've been filming since last summer, but the COVID kind of slowed us down. Right. So um, it's all based in Jersey. Yes. Yes. Okay. And then, so uh, what's the project? What's the project um, that you guys are traveling for? Um, he brought that up, but we can't really talk about it. <laughs> oh. Well, whatever you can, you know, disclose. Oh, uh, you don't have to. I mean, I understand. You know. <laughs> <laughs> well, the R and B group that we can't really say right just right now. Well, he don't forgot to sign his NDA. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but um, R and B group that um we're gonna travel with them and kind of get some background story that haven't been heard before. It's definitely an infamous group that a lot of people heard of before. So, are you guys um, coming to Europe for that? We're going. We're going overseas. But I'm not too sure where we're going. Right now, the, the, a lot of the dates not confirmed. Oh yeah, because but COVID. but yeah. Amsterdam was supposed to be up there actually. Yeah. Hey, listen, if y'all coming out here, I want to be some type of extra. Get get <laughs> one second in the background somewhere in the corner in the dark. I don't care. I just want to say I was in it. <laughs> Make another movie while we're out there. How about that? Hey, I got actors for you lined up over here. So yeah, I did it in Cali before we rolled up in, um, to a film festival. While we was there, we shot another movie called Ben S. Ave, a short film, but we just did it on the fly. And yeah, you can do that. Definitely yeah. do that. That would be dope. We always shot um, with um, Yeah, so I'm looking at the time. Uh, I'm not sure if you got more projects coming up uh, or put Shamari in the, sh in the seat again. <laughs> I just, um, everybody download Hall Mills Network. We got a Roku channel on Roku, Hall Mills Network. Definitely download that. You can see our work, Shamari's work, artists. And just, you know, keep grinding. That's cool. It. Thanks. Thank nice to meet you, Hall, Mr. Hall, Director Hall. Uh, that was cool. That was really cool. Like, I'm, listen, man, I'm just going to promote myself out here. Like, y'all coming out to Amsterdam, I want to be, like, one second. I want to be, like, the, the extra that's in the credit rolls and whatnot. <laughs> yeah, we're supposed to do a... Uh... We actually, the, the film that we're supposed to do when we're traveling is, is like, a, it's a documentary style. Um, yeah, you're not supposed to say all of this according to Director Hall. Well, I won't. I just won't say who it's for, but we, you know, we 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 we're supposed to do that, and that one we we're gonna possibly be all over. So we'll see how that may go. Um, and then we got another project that he didn't mention, but is a is a movie that we're working on filming um in um L A. So oh cool. Yeah, well, so that California is locking down, so that might be like pushed back as well. Yeah, it's gonna be pushed uh, back. So what what about music wise? What do you have coming out music wise? Are any of your artists uh, dropping anything soon? So right now I only have uh, Charlie that I'm officially exclusively working with. Everybody yes. else is more uh, consultant and project related. Um, so right now Charlie is working on, and I hope she's still working on uh, getting me visual for the song Hill, which is her single um that um i think is very very relevant and um touching for today's time we were talk we were talking about that during our talk right. yes right yeah. so we're gonna give you guys a visual uh i'll talk to her after this call and see if i'm still gonna get it this week uh but we're we're, we're preparing to release a visual on hill uh we have a lot of song placements in like bravo tv shows <clears throat> uh, so we're working on getting some more um placements on that um, shout out to um, Lady Luck who actually helped us with that situation. Oh, wow! Yeah. Um, and um, we just we really want to get back to some more live shows. I'm just not sure when when that's gonna happen. Right. Me and her been playing around with the idea, and I, I you know I'll let her confirm it or not. But I think we're gonna do this little EP where we where we have Hill and a bunch of other songs that people have really been gravitating towards, and put that out. Yeah. So we yes, every. Please. She really sent me this this other new song, man. It it's crazy. It, it, I'm this, jealous. I want to hear it, all of it. I want all of it to be released. And um, as I also told Charlie, I will be getting back to you both about some other opportunities for her music. Um, all right. Well, we're just about to wrap it up. Uh, okay. Oh, she just confirmed it. Woo! Yes. Uh, Thank you, Charlie. Uh, 
Y'all, y'all heard it first. Y'all yep, heard, heard it first in my in my IG live talk. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, I wanted to ask you before we wrap up. Um, do you have something to give out to people that are either trying to get in this industry or in whatever role, whether it's an artist or a manager or a film producer or whatever they want to be? Uh, do you have any solid advice that you live by that they could use as well? My solid advice is keep trying and be yourself. Because Just don't be too nice. <laughs> be too nice. But if you keep trying and you're really trying hard, eventually you're going to move to the next step and the next step and the next step. Um, a lot of times people are expecting this immediate result or this immediate response or they're expecting to be accepted by somebody else's formula. There is no formula how to right. be successful in entertainment because every day you see a new artist that proves that wrong, that formula wrong. Or not wrong, but proves it more formulas. So yeah. anybody that's trying to do something, uh, always be a student of your craft. Always try to get better. Yes. Always network with other people that's doing the same or better so you can get better. Um, my last word would be team up, not team down. Yes. Yes, that's it. That's a good one. Team up, don't team down. Um, and also one that I live by, I'm going to give this one out as well, is uh, under promise and over deliver. Absolutely. Because people do too much of the other way around. And I right. never want to say things. I just rather show things. And <clears throat> then it's always better if it turns out to be greater than you than you talked about. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much for this talk. I really appreciate you taking out the time during your editing and, and whatnot uh, in the studio. I'm glad that, uh, that all the connections stayed well. <clears throat> there was no Teddy Riley pulled out here. Um, Unfortunately, we didn't get to see Director Hall break out some dances in the back, but that's okay. Uh, I'll, I'll give him a pass. Um, uh, also, I'm happy that everything goes well, that you're safe and healthy, and that you get to keep working. Um, thank you, everyone, for tuning in as well. I hope everyone stays safe. Uh, I have another amazing artist, uh, well, actually, an amazing producer uh, on Wednesday for another talk, uh, multi-platinum okay. hit producer. So please tune in. Shamari, we will, will be in touch. I'm absolutely yes. grateful that I got to meet you. Thank you, Charlie. Everyone check out Charlie's music. And yes. be on the lookout for Lit the Movie. Where can they find information about the movie on Instagram? So right now you can follow Lit underscore the movie. And I got all the updates that's on there. You can also follow me at I am Shamari Reed. Um, for any updates, um, I would like to thank you, Pace, so much for giving me an opportunity on your platform to tell my story and what's going on with me. I would like to thank everybody, all my supporters, all my fans, all my friends, all my families for being on this talk today and showing your support. I really, really, truly, truly appreciate y'all and I love y'all so much. And I can't wait until you guys see what we got in store for lit. Yes. Thank you so much, Shamari. And this talk will be on IGTV. So if you tuned in late, please tune in from the start so you can hear the entire story and the inspiration that Shamari brought us today. Uh, wish everybody a great day, the rest of your day. Stay safe, stay healthy. Shamari will be in touch. Thank you. All right. Thanks, babe. Bye. Bye.